more while I do this crit attack. Walk forward with the charge R2. You're going to do this stupid spin thing, which is, again, the weirdest thing, and I'm going to die because it's weird, because it doesn't make sense. Enhance. One frame forward. One frame back. One frame forward. Oh, yeah. It's rolling time. So, let me start by saying that this video took way longer than it had any right to. At this point, it's getting a little difficult to tell what this video even is. But I'll tell you what it isn't, so you can temper your expectations a bit. This is not a full analysis of the concept of dodge roll in general and its influence on the gaming industry. But if I ever make that video, I will be able to refer to this one for specific points that I will cover today. Those points being the input delay, and the fact that, contrary to popular belief, the iframes on a roll do not begin immediately. Which Admittedly, also sounds like input delay, but it's actually unrelated. That second issue has existed in this game engine at least since Dark Souls 1, and I have not seen any channel talk about it. So I will. But first, the falling edge input delay, because frankly it has higher and more obvious impact on gameplay. Dodges in these games are programmed to happen when you release the button as opposed to when you press it. Falling edge instead of rising edge. This is pretty much common knowledge, and everyone who plays these games gets used to it. That, however, doesn't mean it's not bad game design. Because it essentially doubles the hardware delay, since you have to press and release the dodge button. And if your character was sprinting before, then the delay is tripled, because you would have to release the button, then press it, then release it again. The fact that the sprinting is bound to the same button is the reason that the roll has to trigger in the Fallen Edge, because the game has to figure out whether you want to dodge or sprint. But there is no reason why those two actions can't be separated. Your only option is to remap sprint and roll together onto another single button. By default, Dark Souls games also have the jump functionality bound to the same button. But ever since Dark Souls 2, the jump can be remapped to another button, including the remastered version of Dark Souls 1. So redesigning the control scheme is clearly possible, and there is no reason why we shouldn't be able to separate two actions that aren't really linked to each other by anything besides developer's decision. So this has always been a bad design, but in earlier games the impact of it was mitigated by the fact that the combat was not as heavily focused on rolling as in newer ones. Because while the enemies get faster, your input delay, and as such your minimum response time, stay the same. So it might be a good idea to decrease that minimum response time in a faster game, like Sekiro. While your dodge and sprint are still bound to the same button, the game makes you dodge first and sprint afterwards. So the dodge isn't delayed. Well, I say it isn't delayed, but there is technically still a delay between pressing the button and the dodge start. That same delay exists in Dark Souls and Elden Ring between releasing the button and the dodge. And I know it's not the fault of my hardware, because in Fury, for example, this delay is basically non-existent, to the point of being within margin of error of recording sampling rate. And by the way, dodge in Fury also triggers on the falling edge of the input. But Fury actually has a reason for it. Your dash can be charged, and the length of the dash depends on the charge time. So now you have a relatively short dash on the falling edge of a quick tap, or a much longer dash if you hold the button, which is the same action, not two different ones. Fury also has a second playable character, who doesn't have a chargeable dash. And what do you know, her dodges trigger on the rising edge, because there is no longer a reason to delay the action. Another example is dodge in Neo, which in neutral state unfortunately still functions exactly like in Souls, Tap to dodge, hold to sprint. However, if you are in guarding state, you cannot sprint. Therefore, there is no longer a secondary action bound to the same button, and the dodge triggers on the rising edge, making it not only safer, but also faster to dodge from a guarding state. And you know what the funniest thing is? This conditional rising edge dodge was present all the way back in Dark Souls 1, most likely even in Demon Souls, though I haven't played that myself. 
If you are locked onto an enemy, the game limits your sprint in directions. You cannot run back or to the sides, only towards the enemy. Which by itself, one could argue is also not a great design decision, but it does mitigate the effects of the other bad design. The game no longer has to figure out if you want to sprint to the side, because you just can't. So when rolling to the side, it will trigger on the rising edge. So, what happens after you learn to deal with the fallen edge trigger and after you also adjust to the several frames of lag before you see the stamina bar decrease, indicating that the game has finally processed your input? There is yet another delay. In theory, according to the frame data, the player character should become invulnerable on the very first frame. Therefore, it should be impossible to take damage on the same frame that stamina is consumed. But that is exactly what happens. It happens in Elden Ring, Dark Souls 3 and Dark Souls 1. Dark Souls 2 is an interesting case, because here the stamina consumption doesn't happen on the first frame of the roll either. You can see the character turn to the side one frame before stamina is consumed. That makes the behavior I'm describing quite difficult to diagnose. So while I have no solid proof one way or another regarding iframes being delayed in relation to the starting frame of the roll, I have a reason to believe that they are not additionally delayed in relation to the stamina consumption. In almost two hours of testing, I couldn't reproduce the event of damage and stamina ticks happening on the same frame, whereas I was able to get it in under 10 minutes in other games. So even if the iframes are as delayed as in other games, at the very least Dark Souls 2 gets some points for not misleading the player as to when the iframes start. As to when the iframes end, however, it also immediately loses all those points for the great levels of clarity regarding agility. I shall now go back to Elden Ring for testing, as it has the widest array of third-party tools that would help illustrate my points. First of all, we need to eliminate any possibility that this behavior is caused by the input delay. Most of you already know that these games feature input buffer, meaning that the game can receive your input for an action at any time, but if your character is unable to execute it yet, for example due to being stuck in another animation, that action will happen as soon as the previous animation ends. More precisely, when the specific cancel window is reached. Cancel window is the earliest point in an animation when the action can be cancelled into a different action. Which, by the way, is the reason for Melania's stagger cancelling, as one of her cancel windows from the light stagger animation is placed unusually early. Go away, Melania, not everything is about you. So anyway, in this example I'm going to use the heavy attack of the beast claws which has the dodge cancel window on frame 42. And I'm going to use these two events to synchronize the footage. These events are the moments in this animation when the stamina is consumed, because for attacks that happens at predetermined points in the middle of the swing, rather than immediately like in case of the dodge roll. As you can see, the stamina for the dodge is consumed one frame after cancel window is reached, and the iframes begin another frame after that, which does line up with testing against an enemy. Once again, you can see the damage and stamina ticks happen at the same time. Logically, you would expect a buffered action to begin as soon as the cancel window is reached. So if I chain multiple rolls together, 9 in this case, the timing should look like this. With invulnerability of the final roll starting at frame 169. But in reality, all the subsequent rolls are shifted by two frames of footage, or one animation frame which builds up to an offset of 8 animation frames. And now, knowing that this delay exists, if we go back to analyze the intro clip from Lobos, we can see the exact same behavior. He rolls the first attack and tries to buffer the roll for the second one. However, now we know that on the first frame of footage that the cancel window is reached, nothing happens. The stamina is consumed on the second one, but the invulnerability frames are not active yet. So, case closed, right? Well, not really. We still need to know if the delay is affected by the frame rate, because while the animation frame data is made for 30 FPS, 
I am running the game at 60. And this is the reason this video took as long as it did. Because at first I got this wrong, as the method I used to limit my frame rate interfered with the game engine. So I cross-checked my results with people from my Discord server, specifically with footage from PlayStation. Because there, the game is natively capped at 30 FPS. And the conclusions are as follows. This delay does exist in consoles as well, but it is not frame rate dependent. So, at the end of the day, does any of this actually matter? In your moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, this is highly unlikely to influence your decision making. The only thing it really does is increase the levels of frustration when you see that damage tick land on the same frame that you were supposed to be invulnerable on. And after suffering through the falling edge input delay, this is just adding insult to injury. But honestly, besides let me separate my goddamn sprint and dodge inputs, there really isn't any profound video essay point at the end here. Just me sharing my knowledge, which I hope you have found interesting. And I'll see you in the next one. I still have some unfinished business with Elden Ring.